Hey, I'm Paige Smith with Below the Radar, a knowledge democracy podcast. Below the Radar is created by SFU's Van City Office of Community Engagement and is recorded on the territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. Today, we're excited to share with you a conversation between two incredible collaborators, dance artists, and friends, Justine A. Chambers and Lori Young. Our host, Am Johal, speaks with them about a really special collaboration of theirs, which has been many years in the making. Their piece, 100 More, is an exploration of the gestures of resistance, both as mothers and women of color. Lori and Justine also discuss their practice of social and relational choreography and how they root their collaboration in care and friendship. I hope you enjoy the episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, Below the Radar. Uh, really uh, delighted to have Justine Chambers and Laura Young uh, with us uh, today. Uh, uh, both uh, dancers, choreographers, uh, doing many, many uh, other things uh, as well. Uh, welcome to both of you. I'm wondering if uh, we can start by having you both um, introduce uh, yourselves, maybe starting with you, Justine. Yeah, my name's Justine, and I live in Vancouver on these unceded territories of the Musqueam, Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people. I live on the downtown east side, which is another site of displacement in our uh, in our city here. Um, I'm a choreographer, and I'm a dancer, a teacher. Um, spend more time, used to spend a little bit more time being a community mobilizer, but um, I'm also a mom, so that takes, that's my, uh, that takes maybe up some other spaces that I used to have freed up for other things uh, within the dance community. I feel very fortunate to be able to work both between the dance community and the visual arts community here and other places too. Laurie? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Laurie Young and I'm a choreographer and dance artist and performer. And I've been, I am Canadian, but I left many years ago. I've been living in Berlin, Germany for over 20 years now. Um, yeah, and my work has lately been very transdisciplinary in nature. I've been working with a lot of um, scientists, um, predominantly anthropologists. And um, yeah, and I had the, the great fortune to meet Justine some years ago. And, and so we've also been in collaboration lately as well. I read somewhere that you met on Kit's Beach. Yeah, at Haddon Park. Did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, see, I did my research a little. You did. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Did, so you mentioned I'm also in the downtown east side right now. Justine, I'm in the old police station building, which has so many uh, complicated um, histories here and uh, um, really um, interesting to see in this pandemic context as well, um, how things have shifted and changed and how crises sort of rolled on top of crises are, are, are happening. Um, I was going to ask you uh, both uh, before we um, talk about a, a specific work of yours, sort of the general sort of nature of your practice, like how you find yourself in this context now, because uh, you've both come out of um, uh, the contemporary arts, uh, the dance uh, world, uh, but you also have kind of critiques of that world um, as well. And I think that's an important sort of context setting piece around uh, the work that you're, you're doing now. Laurie, you want to take that or you want me to start? <laughs> Whoa. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely, my education and my, my upbringing definitely centers around contemporary dance, which has welcomed me in many ways and has given me so much grounding and livelihood and information and has really informed me. Um, but it's also where sometimes I can't necessarily find my community or the resources that I need or, um, yeah, or, or, or kin. Sometimes I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking that and I don't find that. So um, I feel like we're in a moment where those questions are really being put to the fore. Um, in the sense of who has been in the margins, what are the margins, and can we move those margins? Um, so I feel like through movement, there is that possibility of opening up those questions and perhaps even, even answering those questions with movement. Uh, yeah, so so well put, Laurie. You're so smart. Oh, um, this is why I work with I'm Laurie. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. <laughs> oh, always. Like every day walking down the I'm street. Like, Are you so kidding anxious. me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, much like Laurie, my, I mean, Laurie and I actually trained at the same place, but not 
uh, never knew each other in our in our formation training. So like we both were at Le Groupe de la Place Royale in Ottawa. Um, we both grew up mostly in Ottawa. Um, so we share ghosts, but we've never, we weren't friends when we were in Ottawa. Um, and my training was, yeah, like ballet, modern dance, you know, and, and in that structure. And um, it was about physical training and like bombastic, heroic movement and, um, but very much within like a structure, like Laurie said, that doesn't always uh, invite um, the ways I'm not uh, centered, you know, in the world or how, how, how being a, a POC in the world like that was something that there is like a great erasure there um, or that you had to sort of self erase to, to be welcomed into those spaces in some ways. Um, or exoticized. Like, or, oh, God. Or, 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 the, or highlighted to Or be. highlighted as the, mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely that. And I felt that very much in my first job in a big dance company where I was um, kind of, I was the witch or I was the wild <laughs> one. Like that, those were kind of my two roles, right? To be wild or witchy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, which maybe arguably that movement was more interesting to do, but I, you know, sometimes it'd be nice for uh, a, another, another thing to happen. Um, and my practice as a choreographer was really moving away from the heroic movements that I was trained to do or that I did as a dancer, or have always done as a dancer in, in other people's work that I really focused on the daily and the quotidian and the movements that we all do um, uh, you know, this, this word, I think, the social choreography, which has come up, we've talked a lot about it too, Am, in the past. So I think what I kept, what I keep gravitating towards is, is like what's already happening and how can we, yeah, like move that again or move it differently or bring attention to it so we can pay attention to the structures around us um, that are moving us without us paying attention, like with, uh, you know, I think about how we're being moved as opposed to how we choose to be moved. So how we choose to move. Um, so I think there's, for me, maybe that was um, my, my attempt at like, if we can reframe or reconfigure those things or bring a new awareness to those things that perhaps we could ask questions about them because the questions show up when our attention goes there. And, and uh, I see these uh, words, social and relational um, uh, choreography sort of um, attached to uh, both of your, your, your thinking. Laurie, how do you um, think through uh, this notion of social or relational choreography as it relates to your work? Ha. Um, I think I, I, I try to see choreography uh, in everything. I think choreography exists in everything and choreography is like a, a can be systems of rela it's like a relational tool. So um, what I'm really trying to understand for myself is how can I use the choreo choreographic language that I've been kind of brought up with? So things like near, far, um, rhythm, and dynamic, um, how these words have this kind of choreographic vocabulary, how can I see that in the everyday? Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm, I mean, when I hear Justine speaks, there's, there's a lot of echoing in, in how I've been thinking about work lately as well. Um, yeah, and I think that everything, <laughs> I think everything is choreography <laughs> in, in that sense. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not just the, you know, body as in human bodies, but it's the body of the objects or the body of, yeah, um, placement. Um, so, Yeah. Yeah, um, it, and in in uh, the work that you're collaborating on now, 100 more, which I guess the the, uh, the timelines have been torpedoed. I think it was supposed to be um, in Vancouver this fall. Is that right? Yeah, it was yeah. supposed to be in Montreal first at the beginning of April. So yeah. uh, and I'm then so sad I didn't get a chance to see it yet because it has to come back. It it can't be gone yet. It That's hasn't the idea. Been here. That's the um, idea. I'm wondering if you can maybe talk about how the collaboration started or uh, initiated and, and came to be, like your initial conversations about it, because I, I find the artistic process really interesting and in working out of uh, an art school where a lot of uh, grad students are thinking through work, I think this part of the conversation is particularly interesting uh, for them in terms of the, the stage that are at in developing their own work. 
Uh, it's a it's a love story. I mean, right, Lori? It's a total love Absolutely. story. <laughs> um, uh, I'll, like I'll do the, the the how it's. We were both at eight days, which is uh, oh, there's my partner. Um, I'm out of frame. It doesn't matter. And which is a choreograph. Or it's a gathering for choreo Canadian choreographers, and it was put first initiated by Amy Henderson and Ted Robinson. So the second year. Uh, I went to the first year and then Lori applied the second year and I was on that application committee and I was reading her application. I'm like, I want to hang out with this person. And also seeing <laughs> that we had like been and trained in the same place and Lori was in the company at the group. So anyway, but we didn't really like, it took a couple of days for us to spend time together. And it started with us doing an improv, like literally under a tree, like sun dappled. Um, and we were like stuck in this like tiny movement thing, which I'm like demonstrating. Cause I feel like I still remember it. And, yeah. um, and as we were dancing, I was like, I know you, like, I just, yeah. my body knew, like I knew what she was going to do. I know where we were going to go, but I was like, is that my instinct or hers? Like there was this like incredible, like folding in of, of, of like movement and awareness and like I think everybody stopped and we kept going and when it was over we kind of looked at each other like we just had great sex or something you know like it was, it was. Like, it was like whoa <laughs> who are you <laughs> um and so like I think like that was the beginning of the collaboration without us sort of saying we were in collaboration um and and then I guess the next step was that this crystal dance prize that Dance Victoria offers um, for a, a BC based artist to collaborate with an international artist. And like, I just wrote to Laurie and I'm like, do you want to do something together? Like, and it was clear over the course of eight days, we found that like where we overlapped in our interest and, you know, Laurie was a mom and it was like something that was entering my head about being a mother, but I wasn't quite there yet. And there was just, you know, the things we were concerned with, I just thought, girl, let's, let's see if we can get this money because it's a prize. So it's like, you know, there's no reporting and that's always nice. <laughs> and, 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 and then we got it. So that was sort of like, okay. Well, so you got it. it. Yeah. Well, we got it. Because one of the people on the jury who was in Europe knew Lori and then the other people knew me. So we really got it. Uh, people were excited for the two of us to be together as, as we were also. So I feel like that was sort of like how it started and then it was like, what are we going to do? You know, I mean, <laughs> now what? <laughs> <laughs> we had written stuff that was kind of like vague around our practices, probably much like how we just spoke to you. Like, Oh, I'm interested in gesture and the movements of the <laughs> day and like, blah, blah, blah. you know, we kind of put this thing together that sounded like something. Uh, and then I think the first thing we did with the money was that I, we came to Berlin. No. Yeah. Was that the first thing. Yeah. So I was a new mom then. Max was like a year and a bit. And uh, we went and we worked at the Ufer Studios or the Ada Studios. Ada Studios. Ada Studios, yeah. And uh, we read a lot. It was a bit of a constipated process, that first one, yeah? Because we were just like, what are we going to do? And then we would dance together and it would be sublime. And then we would read for a few days. And then get kind of, because I think we sort of centered on gestures of resistance. That was sort of the thing that called to both of us. Um, both of us having like a little uh, personal activism practice um, within the milieu. And, uh, and then we got sick. We all got sick. Remember, like Max was throwing up and the next day I was throwing up and the next day Lori. So we didn't work for a few days. <laughs> but it was just this like gathering information, ga gathering information. But the thing that I can look back with 2020 hindsight is that every time we danced, when we were so unsure talking, I don't know, are we going to do this? I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. How do we take this on? Blah, blah, blah. And then we would dance. And afterwards, we'd, we'd still have that like post sex thing again. You'd be like, oh, yeah, that was so good. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, so it became clear that like, it's in the moving together that we move these ideas mm. that we feel this kinship or this solidarity that we know each other. Um, and then it took four years to make. Yeah, there was a lot, there was a lot of grant writing. Um, yeah, these things take time and we're both, you know, freelance artists who don't live in the same country. <laughs> so it took some time to get, um, a flow going and the flow was also, you know, in the emailing and in the fallow time and in us doing other projects independently and then sharing that information together. So 
yeah, it felt like we were always in the work, even though we weren't always together. Yeah, and I think Lori and I actively, we actively decided to like work on the ideas, making other projects with those ideas so that we could keep the thinking and the moving and the working through the ideas going. Um, Lori had a fellowship where she she was working with gestures as part of this, some of the work he did with the scientists. And I made something... I made a score that was related to it that I performed for something else. And then, I mean, everything just like, you know, it was just like the, the more we can work on it, the more we can work on it. And we were really fine with that not always happening together. So we sort of made all these works that were side by side and then kind of crossed over. And then finally, once we got all of our support in place um, and we could be together more often, um, then, then it started, you know, it starts to cook and you bring in other collaborators. Yeah. But also I think for us, a value of our working, which is not very normal, I would say within our milieu is that we were going to not feel like shit while we did it. We are mm-hmm. not going to be like, we have, we have kids that we want to spend time with and we weren't going to work nine hours a day and be all wrecked for our families. And we weren't going to, um, yeah, we just decided that being well was a value of a work of was a value to working together, and that that in fact was quite radical to like take care of ourselves and each other, um, and that was like the beauty of this project. Because I remember even when we opened in Berlin, <laughs> Lori being like, "Why am I not more nervous? Why don't I feel screwed up about it?" I'm like, "Because we did this in a way where we felt secure, actually." because there was so much care for the other person, even when like we were stuck and we didn't know what to do. And, you know, we never, there was never this sort of de- like devolution to like some um, desperate, horrible feelings. It was like, okay, what do we need to do? Do we need to stop and have a coffee? Maybe we end the day now. Like there was just like this, this commitment to being like well and kind. I mean, our last couple weeks together, when we had all the collaborators together, we called ourselves the house of wellness because it was like, there was supplements on the table. There was hydrate. Like we just like, there was a food in the fridge. We had warm lunch every day. We had a little snooze before the after. Like it was just like everyone felt great and everyone was free then to do work in the way they needed to No one, I never felt compromised. Mm. I never felt like I was working against something. It was like all this like with, 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 and it wasn't like all yeses. We weren't like yes to everything, but we were, we were committed to being well, which felt like, yeah. which felt like a revolution to me, like an internal revolution, you know? Uh, yeah. I think it, I think it really helped that we were well resourced as well. This, oh my God. This, this is definitely not to be underestimated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I just wanted to go back quickly. Um, there was a moment when we weren't sure whether we wanted to make a dance piece. We were like, Oh, maybe we should write something. Cause we were doing so much reading and, and journal writing and we're like maybe it has to be something else like an, in text form and then and then when it, we realized actually no this is has to be live and it has to be about us together in space and I think that's I feel like that's a really important thing for me to remember in this process and especially now reflecting upon you know with COVID and everything that's going on and the value of that moment of liveness and togetherness I feel like um, it was that was really shiny for me then Mm-hmm. And that understanding of what being in movement together can bring. Um, and so I'm just reflecting on that now with all, even more with this lens. <laughs> yeah, when, when you were working on the piece um, uh, last uh, year during a rehearsal, you guys generously invited me um, in one day. And what came across to me as someone who um, um, is not deeply embedded in choreography or, or dance was that. Uh, generosity and friendship and the kind of joy of being together uh, in, in in the work. It really, uh, you could feel it as um, uh, someone just sitting in the audience without having to know anything uh, about the piece it, itself. And wondering, uh, you know, as you've gone through, um, it, it did uh, already, um, uh, you are actually already have uh, launched it in, in, in Berlin, but the, the, the process of how the work evolved from where it began to when you actually were on on stage in in berlin how did you describe that 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 process of how you developed it how you landed it in 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 the way that it it was on stage yeah that's a great question it was also the first time we've collaborated too so there was a Mm -hmm. a lot of 
questions that kind of came up like, oh, you, oh, you actually think differently. <laughs> oh, I have, I have another thought on that. So there was a, it was very interesting to, to uh, understand what each other's practices bring to the work. And like I had, um, I had a tendency to like come with an idea and then it would spiral outwards. And then Justine might have an idea and that would, she's like, no, but what's your knuckle doing <laughs> in that movement? <laughs> I, I don't know, but let's play with speakers. <laughs> you know, so we really had to kind of hone, there were like a million different ideas. And at a certain point you kind of chipped away. And then at a and I feel like, again, it was in the moving and the like putting on music and being with the rhythm and the beats and, um, where there was always this core way of moving that kept coming back and kept coming back and was relentless. And we were, we was like, this is it. And I'm like, yeah, I, I think so. So there was like this one core way of being inside the movement together that just kept calling us. And, um, and I felt, felt like once we made that decision, like the kind of the, the brave decision that every person has, you know, when they're creating a work decision-making time was like, and then once that decision was made and we felt committed to it, it was like, I felt like it was, um, yeah, there, there was a flow. Yeah, I yeah. totally agree. I mean, and now that I go back, like, it's not that different from what we did under the tree either. Yeah. Like, when I think about this, <laughs> the scale of movement and the way we were moving together, yeah. I mean, I think that was the thing that connected us in the first place. And then it was just like some refinement of that. But yeah, certainly, um, we have like really, I mean, you know, you love someone and you like hanging out with them and, and you like their ideas, but then you're like, oh my God, yeah, we work super, super differently, right? Like so differently. So there was that like the learning, the learning from the difference, like what Lori had to bring to my eye and body was so different than what I would have done on my own. And that's why you collaborate anyway, right? So mm -hmm. that you, you invite something new that can like amplify or, or, um, just become like more like more compounded action and thought um, but yeah once we sort of hit on this this movement how we were going to move in rhythm but there's things we always knew like we always knew that we needed like a good like we needed good bass like there is like things that like we need anyway when we're dancing in a, in a club like you need good bass and you need um, <laughs> but it was like stuff and also like for me I hadn't made anything in a theater in like eight years so for this like return into the theater space and this sort of like front facing, but then also that became part of it, the being like hyper front facing, you only see the front of our bodies pretty much the whole work. We don't, we choose what you see very, very, very specifically. But I think what's the same about Lori and I is the level of specificity and like, um, uh, like we're picky. <laughs> and I wouldn't, I wouldn't work both of us in very same and well, actually very different and same ways. So, and, and like, I wouldn't want to work with anybody who wasn't super, super picky in particular and, and asking questions and, and, um, you know, not letting something be enough until we've exhausted it. And I think that was something that for me was where we were super aligned. Um, uh, and then bringing in collaborators. I mean, we were just lucky that we, Lori knew people who knew people who were able to come and be in our process and MSJ and Nada MSJ did the lights and Nada did the sound that they also um, and what was important to us is that they worked in their own process alongside of us without us telling them what to do like it was like whatever you're doing has to be what we're doing but in the way that you would do it so there was this nice two week period at the end there where we were all in the studio. Lori had got us the studio in Berlin that we had that at a kitchen it was very cozy. We could put up lights, we could deal with sound and we were all just kind of working side by side. And I have to admit, like, I don't ever think I saw all the lighting cues ever until I saw the video and it was yeah. fine. Like I wasn't worried about it either. She's like, do you want to look at this? I'd be like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Like I was not worried about, I wasn't worried about it, you know, because there is this way that everybody, was in a process and then we all performed live. So we got to continue to be together in performance. There was never this moment where something was set, nothing. We knew exactly what our score was, all of us, but it wasn't set though, that we could be, again, talking about relationship or social choreography, although uh, is that that was happening between us in relationship, our friendships, our understanding was always unfolding live on stage through four different performances. Yeah, well, where you've had this um, uh, interruption in terms of being able to show the work in Montreal, Vancouver, and, and likely other 
uh, places as well. And everyone's been hit by the, the pandemic context, all of the politics that are unfolding. Uh, if there's a way to uh, 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 structure or set up uh, the work again in the, in the future, and hopefully there is, um, there is a level of structured improvisation built into the work. Do you imagine it changing in some way uh, um, it, as time passes? Uh, do, do you look at the work differently when you watch what happened in Berlin or have video footage of it and everything? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I think those whatever would change would show up in our bodies in the doing of it. I think like we'll know that when we get to stand beside each other again and mm -hmm. move through it because um, I mean, day to day it changes. It would change every time we ran yeah, it, it would, so it would change. And now with all of this and uh, like the, you know, I'm so curious what it would be like. Because part of the process of uh, also some, another thing that we have in common, I think, is the, the body as an archive. So every time that we'd be creating these movements, we're already archiving it in our bodies. And then that would show up in different ways in new iterations in the next performance. And with so much time passing and with so many th all the things that our bodies have been doing since we've last seen each other, yeah. how would that show up also in this context of this in the so hyper politicized moments and hype you know you know where where peace is very much about gestures of resistance and what a moment to be thinking that through and dancing that through and imagine yeah. i have no idea in one year if we do this show again it's it's i i, I don't know <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i'm i mean when i just sort of go back and quickly kind of chronicle my feelings from the past six or seven months or from even the last time we performed it but just like the the amount of grief that i've been feeling in the last uh while um because of the sort of global resurgence of a black like a really global uh resurgence or acknowledgement of the black lives matters uh movement i think that um, maybe before when we did it, there was like tiny bits of grief that like I could sort of contain, but that's sort mm -hmm. of been not, I have not been able to contain that in this time. So um, I just, I'm curious about <laughs> what might show up that because I've opened those doors, you yeah. know, and, and thinking about like all the anti-Asian sentiment that came up with, with COVID. I mean, like first I, my heart was breaking for Lori, um, you, you know, we spoke at one point and you said like, it's not easy being Asian right now. And like, I just like wanted to like fall on the floor and cry for her. And then like the deep ancestral cries that are like moving through my body in this moment in the past several months. So I don't know. I just sort of feel like something else will happen, but I don't actually feel like we have to restructure the work for that. I think what we've made the work holds, it holds all the possibilities. And because the work is so iterative and, um, like even in the doing of it, you know, uh, we may say this is, you know, this is one of the places we're going to get to, but anything that happens before arriving that place and moving out of that place, we don't control. So it really allows for ourselves in the present to conjure our past and like move us forward into the future. So I, I, I don't think at this moment, but you know, we can argue about that later. I don't see myself <laughs> changing the structure. Like I really, I don't, um, yeah. I love this work like mm -hmm. so deeply like this is such for me this is one of those like um if I had to stop and never make anything again like I would feel like cool we made that thing together like I would be completely fine with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Laurie, Justine, thank you so much for joining us on uh, Below the Radar and uh, I just wanted to thank you for the amazing work you do and it'd be a tragedy if we weren't able to see this in Vancouver and Montreal and other places so I hope that there's a way for uh, the work to be to be shown in the way that it that was uh, meant to be so thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening to our conversation with Justine Chambers and Lori Young. Here's hoping that safety permitting will be able to experience 100 more in person someday. Learn more about their work at the links in the show notes and tune in next week for Below the Radar. Thanks for listening. See you later. <laughs>